Well, I go into conversations with people at parties and say I've been asked to chair a group doing the simplification of the Church of England. It's a conversation stopper, people love it, uh, they all break into hysterics. Uh, but of course, the remit is to say we are now in a situation where we need to do mission very urgently, uh, where the re-evangelisation of England is our key task, uh, and where there are a lot of things stopping that. And one of the things that's stopping that is the very complex and quite defensive bureaucracy uh, that we have uh, in terms of the legislation we operate under. So we wrote to all the different dioceses and said, what are the things that are preventing mission? And we got back answers from bishops, from archdeacons, from diocesan secretaries that said, there's a lot of complexity uh, which really doesn't help people in terms of being able to be fleet footed and change things and enable things to happen in order for us to reach uh, new ways of communicating the good news of Jesus Christ. Well, we started, as I said, by consulting the diocese. Uh, and what we found was there are some common themes. And so what we're bringing to Synod is a report uh, with a lot of different possibilities for legislative change, most of which takes quite a long time. So we prioritise some. And the priorities are making common tenure for clergy such uh, that folk can do short-term appointments, can do turnaround jobs, uh, people who are in curacies can extend their curacies if they need to uh, without staying in the same job for life. Uh, a whole pile of things around that. Secondly, we want to make more use of bishops' mission orders. Uh, and we found that most dioceses are frightened to use them because they're much too complicated. It's the usual principle of saying, well, let's build in lots of terms about why it might not quite work. So conditions are attached, consultation uh, is to the nth degree. Uh, we're simplifying all that. It's important because we aren't fleet of foot enough to be able to do mission. Uh, if you want to reorganise parishes, if you want to put uh, new experiments in place, if you want to put missional communities on the ground, uh, you can't do it without a lot of faffing around uh, and quite a long time in the process. Now, it's important to be considered. It's important to have a legal framework. and The Church of England's got that. Uh, but what we haven't got is the ability to say, we'd like to do this for the next three months, we'll have achieved it. Uh, that The Church of England has not worked like that in the past. And we're saying it's perfectly possible, uh, with all the constraints and safeguards you need in terms of proper consultation, to achieve change for mission, uh, for new experiments in doing things, for people doing different sorts of jobs, uh, in ways that will actually benefit the, the, the mission of the Church of England uh, and enable us to uh, make a difference uh, in evangelization and in relating to our society. Oh, if we don't do anything, well, let's not get into apocalyptic language. Of course, the Church of England has survived over a long time. Uh, and sometimes people say, oh, you're just making um, a lot of noise about uh, how difficult it'll all be. Uh, and people have accused us, I think, of trying to be too dramatic. But I do think we are near the last chance saloon. There are parts of the country where the Church of England will probably not be surviving in 30 years time unless we do something uh, to bring new people to church, uh, to re-engage with our communities, to build on the really good stuff that's already going on. No one's saying nothing's happening. What we're saying is uh, a sea change is needed whereby the church needs to restructure itself in order to evangelise the country. And that's why the task groups are in place, because they actually join up. Uh, the task group for training senior leaders to enable bishops to be uh, much better both at being bishops, fulfilling their ordinal tasks. Uh, no one's saying we, we, that we're, we're going to stop being uh, the calling that we have according to the ordinal and according to our, uh, our calling to be chief pastors and leaders. Uh, but it's also about being able to manage take difficult decisions, engage with uh, all the consequences of having to make major structural changes. Task group on ministerial education, which will enable the clergy to have better resources, to be better trained, uh, both before ordination and afterwards, with more money flowing in to do that, uh, and getting rid of some of the bureaucracy that's been around uh, in ministerial education, which, uh, again, regulations that prevent people from doing things. A task group on how we uh, deploy the resources the church commissioners have uh, better so that the money that we've got at the centre of the church can go towards the diocese that need it uh, for missionary tasks that need it. 
and a task group uh, which is about simplification, which is the one I'm actually chairing, which says let's make our structures more amenable to change. Alongside that, I think we also need to look at how uh, the major uh, central organs of the Church of England operate. Uh, so that uh, something about uh, Synod, Archbishop's Council, the Pensions Board uh, and the Church Commissioners, uh, looking at how they work better and service the Church uh, and make the Church better for mission from the centre as well. Uh, and that's something else that's in hand. Uh, so I'm really excited by the task groups because I think for the first time we're grasping nettles which we haven't grasped properly before uh, and there's a real chance of change. People misunderstood the leadership report. I think the people who've got a, a bit of a, a concern that we are losing our focus on what it means to be distinctively Christian think that if you bring in management insights somehow things will go pear-shaped. Uh, I want to say no absolutely not uh, it's both and I want to be a good bishop I want to be a pastor I want to be theological uh, I want to be motivated by my calling under God all those things make the church distinctive but I don't want to miss out on the fact that the Church of England's a structure uh, it's an organization and it, and it bears all the hallmarks of the good and bad things about structures and organizations uh, and when you do change in an organization it creaks uh, and uh, it's necessary to try and manage that change well. If you don't train people for that, uh, you will find that you'll fail. I think there are, th there are three things to be worried about. One is the pace of change is always difficult for an organisation. Secondly, change management is quite introverted and it'd be very worrying if we spent all our time looking in ourselves. And, and the third thing is that uh, we spend a lot of our time arguing about the necessity for change. Uh, and actually, I don't think that we need to argue about it for very long before we see the necessity of it. And I don't want us to get into a situation where we spend all our time debating whether the Church of England uh, needs to change or not. I think it's absolutely paramount for us to grasp this early and get on with it. I'm hoping people will be enthusiastic about it. I know there are folk who will be concerned because change always frightens people. Um, but I'd like Synod to be saying, actually, we've sat through some of these debates. We realise how constrained we are by the structures we operate within uh, and how we can spend a lot of time in Synod debating minutiae. Uh, we had a long debate about church representation rules uh, in the last couple of Synods. They took forever. What we didn't recognise was that you probably need rules that aren't universal. That the rural church operates differently from the urban church and again differently from the suburban church. Uh, and the rural church needs to be able to be free, not to be constrained by lots of rules and regulations about PCCs and church wardens they can't recruit, uh, but to have a flexible way of doing things which might not be appropriate somewhere else. Synod's got to recognise that. And I hope that when we come to the elections for 2015 Synod, the folks will stand who actually want change and realise that change is absolutely crucial to the mission of the church over the next 10, 20 years.